Welcome to the Church Universal Series, where we seek to tell the often untold story of the many apostolates in the Catholic Church, which are making a positive difference in the world through their charitable works and prayerful lives. Drug addiction, we know, is an ever-growing problem throughout the world. How can we stem the tide of addiction and best help those bound by those chains? Today's guest found the way to freedom in his own life and now helps others to do the same. Father Bobby De La Cruz is a priest in charge of San Luc Bay, a program in the Archdiocese of Manila. Welcome, Father Bobby. Yeah, glad to be here, Father Joseph. So we're going to have two episodes, and this first episode, we especially want to hear your story. There's nothing like someone's own story of how the Lord helped them in their life and helped them to bring, to make that move from darkness into light to give us all hope and courage. So why don't you begin to tell us a little bit about your own history and story? Uh, I'm from a Catholic family. And uh, when I was 14 years old, I started experimenting in marijuana. But uh, of course, I was not addicted to it, but uh, I used to drink alcohol, go to youth bars at, uh, during my younger days. But then when I graduated from college, uh, I was introduced to use to, uh, shabu. We call it shabu here. It's mm -hmm. crystal meth uh, uh, right. known in other countries. So I got addicted to crystal meth. So also downers on the side. And that's the time when a life uh, went, uh, uh, went down. So many times I was incarcerated. I was mm -hmm. in and out of prison and rehabilitation centers until <laughs> the last time I was they tried to admit me uh, rehabilitation center. I was not allowed to uh, uh, to enter the program because they told me I'm already used to it. There's no use. So that was my case. And uh, though I wanted to change, mm -hmm. but uh, I couldn't help my addiction. So you were ready to uh, uh, to give up, perhaps, because of all of the things you had tried and nothing had seemed to work up until that point. I, I was at the point of resignation. Uh, of course, uh, I, I do not intend to kill myself, but uh, to, to have a better life that I wanted to have is uh, not the question anymore. So that's it. But then something happened that broke through the darkness and brought the light into your life and gave you a new hope and a new start. What was that? Yeah, my, it was my last arrest uh, when I was, I was able to get out on bail. And one time I went to a parish nearby our house. Uh, it's St. Paul's Parish, where there's an announcement of evangelization. And uh, out of curiosity, I, I attended that evangelization. Remember, I was not even a church goer. Mm -hmm. I was just there to just, just to get some air. But uh, surprisingly, uh, I heard something from that evangelization that I never heard before. And uh, although I was not expecting anything that could happen, but the Word of God really affected me. Hmm. And of course, the people preaching seems strange to me. It's, uh, I was expecting that uh, they have something, uh, they need something from me, and yet they're willing to give their life for me. And for me, that's not normal. Because uh, in the drug world, right, it's about what you can get and you want to always have a payback for whatever you give. Is that right in the drug world, yeah. typically? 
Yeah. And so this That's was something different that you were seeing yeah. in Christians who were living the faith. The yeah, giving their lives without expecting anything. Was and there that any struck me to the core, especially the Word of God. I, I was like a sponge listening uh, to everything that they said and willing to believe. And uh, it's kind of a, a pinprick of hope that I saw during that time, but at least there's hope. And uh, I grabbed it. <laughs> <laughs> there really is a power to the Word of God. And, you know, yeah, it's yeah. now 40 years the network has been broadcasting the Word of God. And Mother believed that even yeah. when it was broadcast to places where maybe there was no population, it was still having an effect because the yeah. Word of God says that it won't return without some effect. Yeah. And being led by the life of grace during the time, because after the evangelization, a community was formed. This is the neocatechumenal way, wherein mm. we were fed, nourished by the sacraments. And uh, the first time I experienced uh, this tremendous joy, mm. being with the church, living the life of the church. So you had been away from the sacraments, and I'm sure going to confession, receiving Holy Communion, yeah. had to have this transformative effect. Yeah, yeah. It was very meaningful receiving that sacrament for the first time. Imagine, I've been to a Catholic, um, to Catholic institution from elementary up to college, but never appreciated uh, the sacraments. But the very first time, maybe because of the, the things or the experience that I've been through, suddenly it was a tremendous mm. surprise. And I think you would yeah. agree with me that as a priest, I'm convinced that that's why the church continues after 2,000 years, is that Jesus really continues to work in a profound way through the sacraments and through the Word of God. Yeah. Definitely, yes. And also, the life of the community. I think the community has helped me a lot to recover from what I've been going through. Talk about the need for community support. And I know that this is part of the Sunlock Bai um, charism, is that you have, I think, small groups, and then you have yeah. these gatherings as well. How is that so necessary for recovery? Well, in order to recover, especially from drugs, for me, it's necessary to have somebody to, somebody to accompany you. That's mm -hmm. why we're using the tool that uh, I think not, not only that Pope Francis promotes, but he used this, the pastoral accompaniment. Yes. You know? uh, so. Uh, we accompany them. Uh, it's not like that we are there for them, but we are with them uh, during those sessions. Uh, you know, uh, with my experience, I hate moralism so, uh, to uh, so much uh, the burden of uh, the burden of giving us laws and to obey, but just to be with them mm -hmm. and uh, to develop a profound relationship with them, eventually they will develop also the relationship with Christ himself. Mm -hmm. You talk about the influence that a Capuchin friar priest had on you and just his gentle approach that he was one of those that accompanied you. Yes. His name is Father Arrieta. He, uh, he passed away. Uh, I think he is. A, he marked a very uh, remark. Uh, there was some remarkable uh, experience with him because of his words of wisdom and also his humility. Um, 
I think he he has influenced very much the the vocation that I received from the church to become a priest. And that's pretty remarkable, isn't it, that you were ready to give up or not give up life, but just kind of resign to your situation. And then Christ enters into that darkness, brings you into the light. And then surprisingly now, he calls you also to be one of his priests. Talk about that and how that yeah. took place. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> of course, uh, becoming a priest uh, never crossed my mind. And even my mother, <laughs> my father died uh, at the early age. And well, in fact, she was even against me entering the seminary. So I hid it from her when I was in the pre-formation. Well, uh, what can I do? I, as Jeremiah said, I allowed myself to be seduced by the Lord. <laughs> the Lord seduced me, and I allowed it. So here I am. So with the tremendous gift of joy that I received, how could I refuse to share it with others? Now, I think uh, this is uh, the place or the calling that the Lord uh, is now, until right now, he's still preserving me with the priesthood. And I love that you are moved by especially words of Pope St. John Paul II to have courage and to be not afraid. And so talk about yeah. the impact that, that those words had on you. Yes, I was evangelized uh, the later part of 94, 1994, in 95, John Paul II came to the Philippines for the World Youth Day. Uh, I was trying to recall that event uh, as if that event, uh, during that time, I felt that God visited me. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it's so, it has made an impact on my life. And of course, you know, the, the words of John Paul II and that phrase, I couldn't forget because I was afraid to get involved with God. Hmm. I was afraid that the life of the church is something not for me. But right. then upon hearing his invitation, courage, do not be afraid. I yes. think that's enough for me to continue. And what would you say to someone who may be watching or tuning into this program who maybe they've lost heart, maybe they've tried everything in their mind to recover from addiction of one sort or another, and they're ready, ready to lose heart? What would you say to them? Well, I would say the same as John Paul, Paul said to me. Courage, do not be afraid. I am here. I'm with you until the end. So God remains with us, and what would be the next step for them to take? First of all, I suppose, turn to the Lord for ask for light, for grace. Yeah. And then what other steps would you recommend? Uh, first of all, this is to ask for help, to be humble enough and to be simple enough to, to ask God to to help us, uh, to admit that we are helpless. I think this is always the first step. Then to allow ourselves to be led by the Spirit, to, to allow ourselves to be, to be influenced by the Word of God, and not to be afraid, of course. So to realize we're not orphans, we're not alone, yes. that God yeah, loves us that he's ready to help us yeah. if we just turn to him. Yeah. We have to turn to him. And uh, that's just what I did. I'm not an expert. I'm not even, uh, I think, <laughs> uh, in capacity to, to change my life, but somebody helped me. And uh, I think without God, I re remain uh, in darkness. 
And you know, I think those who have seen and experienced the darkness and have come into the light are the most powerful witnesses, especially those that find themselves maybe in that same darkness. And so that's where I think, yeah. Father, your own witness is a powerful thing. And I wonder if you could offer a prayer now for anyone who may have tuned in, who is struggling with addiction, maybe they're in recovery, maybe they've made some progress, or maybe they haven't. And I know that your heart um, has a sensitivity for them and the struggle. Yeah. So would you be so kind to offer a prayer now for anyone who may have tuned in now in, in such a need? Okay, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we are now in front of you, begging for your mercy. And with joyful heart, we are very happy that you are with us always, even in the times of uh, our unfaithfulness, our being weak. Father, we ask you to give us the grace, especially the Holy Spirit, again, to give us the courage to stand up, to trust you, to have faith in you, that you have the power to free us from the slavery of the things that our heart we're longing for. We ask you to give us a heart that thirsts for your word, to be with your son, to be with you, wherever you wanted us to be. And we ask this through Christ our Lord, Amen. In the, name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you. And I know that you have many in uh, your organization who are those who struggle with addiction. They found their way to freedom and who now work in, uh, in the organization. So maybe talk yeah. about that, how that's part of your recovery, too, is helping others. It's not just finding my own way to freedom but then helping others also helps me in my own continued recovery. Yeah, I agree. We, uh, one of the coping skills that we always suggest is to help other addicts to recover from their slaveries. And that's very important. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think we always had to need to have that outgoing love, right? That, Sometimes we can yeah. be so turned in on ourselves, our own selfishness, and that really brings about a certain darkness. But when we have love that's going out, <laughs> then there's a freedom, yeah. and we're living that Trinitarian life that we're called to, that our Lord has invited us to, and that he's revealed this self-giving love that we're called to, to live. I, well, I agree with you that the, the only way to remain happy because everybody wants to be happy. Yes. Uh, well, in fact, people got addicted because they wanted to be happy. And yes. for that happiness to remain with us, is the only way is to love, to give our life to others. And uh, that's the guarantee that love will and happiness will remain in us. I noticed on your website that you have Cardinal Tagli, who is there, and yeah. he's... Uh, <laughs> How is he associated with your work? Well, at the beginning of San Lakbay, he was the one who encouraged us and, uh, well, is very supportive of us. And, well, in fact, we, we began this program <clears throat> by his help. No? And until now, he's communicating with us and uh, uh, trying everything to help us. Can you tell us uh, maybe some stories that you've seen? And you've been in existence, I believe, since 2016. And just yes. some of the transformation of lives that perhaps that you've seen in these years that uh, the group has existed? Well, I could uh, cite some experiences, like some now are in the service of the church. They work as lay ministers. Some of them are 
working in the community as barangay tanods, we call it. Uh, it's kind of a, a barangay police and uh, traffic aids. And uh, most importantly, some now are involved in faith communities. And that's, that's my hope. That will sustain them, I guess. I suppose, yes. <laughs> and presently, you are in the Archdiocese of Manila, and you're in the parishes. You don't have a large center, although you'd like to have that, I believe. But you're in some 20 parishes in the Archdiocese of Manila. Uh, maybe talk about how that work has continued in the parish, on the parish level. Initially, uh, the Cardinal, even the director of Caritas Manila, we, we planned for uh, a sort of uh, facility-based rehab center. Mm -hmm. But after our collaboration and talks with the government and some other sectors, we came up to a community-based rehab center wherein uh, the recovering drug addicts would attend the mm. sessions as an outpatient uh, outpatient participants. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we use the parishes and uh, the parish volunteers as volunteers for for the sessions that we are making for the program. So there are sessions. Uh, this is within six month period. And uh, every week, we meet them as groups. So this is how it is. So the, the thing is, uh, they're enlisted. You know, we call them watch-listed, you know, the, the, the surrenderers. Mm -hmm. So the motivation, the first motivation to attend us, the sessions, the program, is for them to be taken out from the watch list or their names be suspended. So this is the motivation. Okay. But then, uh, in the process, we try to evangelize them also. But because I, uh, I believe that only uh, having a relationship with Christ yes. would free them from that slavery in drugs. So Amen. we do this in the parishes. Now, for people who live in the Archdiocese of Manila, or maybe even outside, what should they do? Go to a parish that has uh, San Lak Bay? Uh, what would be a way for them to find help? So, for, uh, I suppose every diocese has a program for, for addiction. <clears throat> you know? But uh, for our office, they can contact us through Caritas Manila, okay. or uh, they can uh, approach us in our center. We and have a website, which is sunlockby. Sunlockby.com. Yes, sunlockby.com. Well, thank you for telling us your story, and we look, to, look forward to talking to you again to get more details about yeah. this wonderful uh, organization, so needed at this time when addiction is so rampant. Yeah. So, Father, uh, we'll be looking forward to the second episode. Okay, thank you, Father. Courage, be not afraid. Our words of Jesus, which Pope St. John Paul II quoted at the beginning of his papacy. St. Paul likewise wrote that he could do all things through Christ who strengthened him. If you struggle with drug addiction in your own life, look for a program such as Sun Luck Bai in Manila. There are others in other countries as well. One that finds a way to freedom in Jesus Christ because Jesus gives us divine help. He is able to do all things. We can conquer all things. We can climb all walls, as the Psalm says, with God's help. So courage, do not be afraid. Jesus will help you. And we will see you again this time next week for another episode of The Church Universal. Thank you.